All right, welcome everybody. We'll get started here. I'm James Hogan, Option View Product Consultant now for uh, for a few years here. Uh, excited to uh, share uh, some insight uh, into using Option View, uh, especially for those just getting started. That's kind of what we're gearing this towards. Uh, some important settings uh, to take a look at uh, when you're just starting out with Option View, and uh, you know, a nice overview for anyone that uh, is uh, using Option View as well. Yeah, it's interesting. I was talking to a longtime user of Option View this afternoon. And he was stating that he's trying to get his uh, uh, his son into uh, uh, using Option View, and they're actually using uh, uh, Thinkorswim right now uh, to uh, execute their orders through. And uh, you know, he's just sharing with his family the ease of use of Option View to quickly be able to analyze trades, and uh, you know, get some better modeling out of it as well. So I'm going to share, you know, how you can uh, how you can do that uh, today, and let's get you up and running. I'm going to go ahead and share my desktop. Uh, with you now, so you'll see my option view. And one second here as it comes up, and there you go. You got my option view here. Pretty big down day, actually, was down a lot more uh, earlier in the day. Uh, got a nice spike in volatility. Good for options trading. This is where you're going to start off with option view. Um, this is called the quotes display. And also up here on the left, it tells you what account you're in. When you first get Option View, um, I believe it says at the top here, Account 1. Uh, basically, Option View sets you up with a default account. Uh, you can have an unlimited number of accounts in Option View. And I'm going to just click on this so you can see my drop down box here of all the accounts that I've set up. Some of them are actually live trading accounts that I have, some of them are back tests that I've done. Um, other ones I, I use demo or test account when I'm using uh, uh, talking to someone on the phone and looking at some trades with them. So you can create an unlimited number of accounts, and it's important when you start off to kind of click on this info button here. Okay, this is going to show you what account you're in right now, and this is where you would go to start a new account. Okay, you can name this account. Uh, for instance, if you were trading, uh, had a live account with I think or swim, you could name it Toss. Uh, these, uh, you know, are something you'd want to talk to us about uh, if you, you know, actually were uh, trading through track data or a super account. What that allows you to do is combine a number of different active accounts together so you can look at them all together. So, for instance, if you had an account with TOS or Interactive Brokers or Options Express and you want to look at all your positions together, that's what a super account means. But for now, I'm just going to start a new account here, and I would hit OK. You can put the starting date in there. So you could actually go back and, uh, you know, import trades uh, from a trading account you started a long time ago, or if you wanted to back test something, say, going back to January of 2005, we actually have data going back to January of 2001, uh, that you could back test uh, anything you wanted U.S. exchange uh, traded that far back. But, for instance, so you could hit this, uh, click a, a, start, a starting date here, and then you could say how much capital you wanted your account to start with. Okay. And now you could hit OK, and you've got a new account started here. OK. So within this account, once you have a new account started here, you could actually go right in. And uh, for open positions, you can kind of adjust this, whether you want slippage and commissions to be included in open positions. Um, if you're tracking a strategy, you could actually include the previous uh, 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 trade, the existing trade you're looking at to include the previously realized gain losses. So if you have like an ongoing Condor or credit spread uh, strategy going on, you could do that. But over here is where you can actually, you know, uh, set up what your commissions are. You know, a lot of people for pure analysis reasons would might want to just do uh, zero commissions and then you can go back in and, and adjust for them later if you wanted to. But that's how, you know, it's important that you're able to, just so you know, you're able to create a number of different accounts in Option View, and you can switch between them pretty easily. Um, you know, you can do a number of different back tests, um, and all this information is saved uh, under the account. Okay. Um, so that's under the Info button to create a new account. Um, any of the transactions that you do are saved to this T log, transaction log, underneath this account here. Okay? And then once you create a transaction log, you can, you know, really be able to see some nice uh, reports that Option View can create for you. Let me jump over to a, a different account um, that I have some transactions in. And if you actually clicked on 
uh, status. I don't have any trades in here now, but it would give you your overall account um, standing, basically. You know how much cash you have available. Um, you know stock uh, option buying power, margin requirements. Your po entire portfolio is delta. You know your total realized gain losses. You'd be able to see all of that. But the nice thing about it also is you can click on this reports thing, and it's going to show you here. And I'm just looking at from January 2011, uh, which is roughly when my first trade was done in March. This is gonna basically just a um, weekly's kind of first came out in Apple back in uh, beginning of 2011. So I did a back test a while back. But you can see, you know, I went uh, and basically put all these transactions on uh, on a weekly basis in the weeklies, and you can, you know really have some nice reports when you're done okay uh, basically I stopped my uh, back test in March of 2012 so this would be spread out more and I can do that just to show you Actually, I'll do four. Uh, uh, it should be 12 okay so this is actually you know how my back test worked out here and you can see from this performance analysis tab here it's going to tell you you know your total profit gains losses gains uh loss ratios you know period how long uh of uh, a period that i actually did this strategy number of trades so a lot of nice detailed information uh, a lot of people sometimes are interested in the biggest drawdown when you're doing a particular strategy you can find um you know i had a big drawdown looks like towards the end there um but those are important factors that you can quickly go back and look at. Now, for instance, I did this strategy. What you could do then is say, okay, how can I tweak the rules of my strategy and go back and and uh, and look at it again? Well, you can go back and uh, maybe change uh, an entry point or an exit exit point on your strategy for your weekly, and then compare the results and see how you would have done. Uh, I did a basically a year back test in this. Um, it probably took me about. Uh, 45 minutes to do this back test over the course of a year. So basically putting on 52 trades and taking them off uh, in the course of a week. So uh, great uh, uh, tool option view can be for testing strategies. Um, and again, you want to do that when you test a strategy. You go to info and create uh, the title for your uh, your account that you're going to do that back test. And, and then, you know, that's uh, where you're going to be able to see the reports and everything like that. So uh, I'm going to go back to my test account here. But that's import, important to know. Um, keep uh, you know different transactions and different accounts and different things you're looking at separate. Uh, so from the quotes display here, um, you can actually create a number of different tabs. You can see these tabs I have at the bottom here. I just basically right click. I can insert a tab and create a new one. And I could name this. I'm just going to name it test. I always do that. So now I have a test tab here, and there's nothing in it. So then you could, you know, populate it if you have a watch list or, you know, some kind of candidates that you're looking uh, maybe to do earnings plays on, things like that. Um, I, I have a main. This is where I'm, you know, looking at every day, watching the indexes basically. And if I have, these are actually my trading accounts down here that I'm watching trades on. Um, I have an ETF that I have broken down into sectors. Um, I actually have a, a complete futures uh, strictly Futures uh, tab down at the bottom, so I can look, go over here and look at these. Um, I have currencies over here. So, and this is totally customizable. When you get Option View for the first time, it is. Uh, we have some preloaded symbols in there, but you know, basically, you can click on the top bar here, and the pound sign followed by you know a title, uh, whatever you want it to be, is going to create a group for you here. So you can see that I have this indices group and then down here I have OX this is an options express account I have a trade monster account uh, and then you can see so you can know you can create you know the groups however you want to um, in order to create uh, a blank uh, field here you just simply hit the insert button on your keyboard okay so I'm highlighting this RBX here. I'm hitting the insert button, and it's creating a blank field for me. And you can put in you whatever you want to. The delete button on your keyboard does just what you think it would do. Highlight it, and it gets rid of that cell for you. Um, another way you can do that, some computers are configured differently. You could always go up to edit at the top here and insert a row. Okay, it does the same thing. And then you can also delete the row that way as well. Okay, these columns across the top here 
are uh, customizable as well. Okay, and you could again highlight it, hit the insert button to create a fresh row. I'm sorry, a column, and then right click. Basically, I just right clicked in here, and these are all the uh, parameters you could select for for this column if you wanted to. Okay, kind of a newer feature uh, we have is uh, this earnings announcement date. I already have this column, so I'm not going to put it there. Um, and I'm going to delete this column, actually. But you put the earnings date in here in your quotes display, and it's automatically going to pull when the next earnings date is. Uh, so Facebook's coming out um, after market close. So that's what that means on October, uh, end of the month here. Uh, this one already took place for Walgreens uh, on Tuesday, before the market opened on Tuesday that happened. Okay, um, these are here, and uh, the data is not coming in yet for whether it's before or after the market close. But these will automatically update for you uh, as long as you have this earnings day column here. Okay, important thing to know if you're putting a trade on some type of a spread. Um, you know, you don't want to get caught unaware of a, a, a big earnings announcement coming out when you're putting a trade on. Okay. Um, so that is uh, how you will uh, kind of configure your matrix here, uh, not your matrix, your, your quotes display. Okay. Now let's say you wanted to go in up deep further. This is the kind of the starting level here. You have your, you know, you know the account that you're set up in. Uh, you're in your quotes display, and now let's go ahead and you can want to dive into an options chain. We call it the options matrix. Uh, you can double click on the symbol, or you can click the matrix button. It does the same thing. Left click twice on GLD is going to pull up an options chain. Okay. Now this is what yours will look like if you first get option view. Um, and what you can do is you can customize again the columns up here. Okay. We have the calls on top. We have a, a little arrow here representing the at the money, and then the puts on the bottom here, and then the at the money put right here at the 127. Okay, to customize what your uh, matrix is going to look like here, your options chain, um, you're going to want to go up to view at the top left here. Okay, and you're going to want to go to default matrix format. Okay, now we're looking in the options tab here. I believe the default is like a one by three when you first get option view. I like to do a one by five. Okay, and you want to have a market price. This is the uh, average between the bid and the ask price for that strike. MIV is the average uh, uh, IV. That basically is taking the average of the bid and the ask IV. Implied volatility there. Then you have a trade column for analysis. You have an existing position. That means that you've converted it and you want to track this trade, and it's actually a transaction uh, that's recorded in your T-log. And then I have OI, open interest, down here. Now, you can change these, you know, however you want to. You can have a drop-down here, and you can uh, select these uh, different column headings uh, for whatever you want to see when you have your options chain open. Once you have one that you like, you could click up here and hit, uh, hit the Set Default 1 button. Okay. I only have two defaults, and I'm going to show you my second default. I'm going to Get Default 2. And then when I'm in the matrix, I can switch between them. If you look up here to the left a little bit next to format, I can switch one, two, three. These are the equivalent of these buttons, the set, the defaults you have, one, two, and three here. Okay. So, you know, if I'm looking to put something on, I will go ahead and, and uh, look at these prices. I'll, I'll then switch over, and I want to look at what's the spread, where's the bid, where's the ask, what did this last trade at, how much open interest and volume is there out there. Okay. So again, uh, to do this, you would go to View, and this is the default setting up here at the top. So anytime you open an options chain, you're setting up this default matrix format to this here. If, for instance, you went into a, a specific underline, like we're in gold right now, and uh, the GLD, let's say I just wanted to change, I wanted this to be something different, you can customize you know, each underlying assets. Uh, options chain matrix to look differently and you would click on that by uh, uh, clicking on this format button here and then you can change it just for the spider GLD here so then you can adjust it accordingly just for this underline if you want to so extremely customizable 
uh, as far as that goes. So now, like I said, I have the market price. This is my first default. And if I click on this number two button, you're going to see now all that information that I uh, had for my second default. Okay. Across the top here, you're going to see uh, the contracts that we're looking at. I don't have weekly set up here, but we're looking at October, 16 days left to expiration, and that expires on the 19th of October. Okay. Um, another important default here, let's go get ahead up to view at the top here again. This time we'll go to default auto strike. Okay. The default auto strike uh, sets up what you're going to see as far as strikes and contracts that populate in your options chain uh, when you first open it up. Uh, the strike range, uh, I usually like to have mine set to large, so that, that way I'm looking at a large amount out of the money and in the money for both the calls and the puts. Okay, I want to see all strikes. Maybe if you're looking at the SPX or something else uh, that has a ton of strikes trading, maybe you want, only want to look at 10-point uh, strikes. You can set it up that way if you want to. Um, if you want to include weeklies or leaps, if they're available, you can do that in here as well. And then you can also have a you know a larger number of contracts going out into the uh, future, uh, you know all the way up to 12 if you wanted to. Okay. So that's up at view at the top. That's default for everything uh, that you open an options chain for. Now again, you can customize it just for this. Uh, underline if you wanted to. So say I went into the matrix for gold here and I want to only look at something uh, different for this. Well, I would click on the define button. And now we're, looking, we're defining the spider GLD. And you can see here I'm overriding the default settings because I don't have the weeklies checked off here like I did for my under view default uh, auto strike. So now I can change this if I want to and hit apply and now I'll hit okay and now my weeklies are going to populate here. So, you know, I must have been in here looking at putting in a GLD trade uh, a while back and I didn't want the noise of the weeklies cuz I only wanted to do something, you know, in maybe uh, October or November or something like that. So that's why I, you know, turn the weeklies off so I could just focus on the on the monthlies. Okay. Now, as far as uh, the color you saw when you first came into my, uh, my matrix here, is this button right here. This is the S button, and what that's going to do, it's going to pull in the standard deviations. Okay? This color you're going to see at the money here represents the at the money. This way, you can easily navigate through the strikes up and down and know where the at the money is right away. This darker shading here, and I have my colors customized, um, this darker shading here is the first standard deviation. This lighter bluish color on either side is the second standard deviation out in either direction. And as time goes, uh, you know, as we look out in the future, the standard deviations get larger and larger, of course, because there's more time for the underline to make a move. And it kind of stares, you know, up from the left to the right. So, you know, a lot of people will use these standard deviations uh, to challenge uh, an underline to move. Um, you know, within that uh, uh, first or second standard deviation. Okay. Um, I'm just going to check real quick and see what kind of questions I got here. Um, just to answer a quick question, uh, someone's asking besides TOF, which other trading firms can you use for Option View with? Uh, interactive brokers, you can use their data in Option View currently. And uh, um, Track data out of New York. You can actually uh, trade through Option View uh, through them. They're a, a smaller company out of New York, and that's all we have uh, uh, right now. Uh, we are working with some other ones, but I don't like to uh, talk about it until uh, or get people excited about it until it's actually uh, happening there. So, um, but uh, there are some things in the works going to be coming. Uh, hopefully by the end of this year, that'd be great. Um, so now let's go ahead and look at a trade. Okay, let's say we wanted to put something on. Uh, here's the weekly that came out today. You got nine days. And this expires next Friday. Okay, and let's say you wanted to look at a uh, maybe a, a butterfly here in this. Actually, let's go and look at a different underline because I was looking at Priceline actually. So I'm just going to close out of this one, and I'm going to go down here and here's Priceline. I'm going to double click on this one, open up a new options chain for this, 
And while I was waiting for, you know, 3.30 to hit, I put this little tray down here. And I'm challenging it just outside of the first standard deviations in either direction on the on the weekly here with 12 days out. So I'm just selling two at the money, and I'm buying one out here and buying one in the money here. Okay. Down here, it's going to show you what your requirement requirements are, what the combined uh, position Greeks are going to be. Okay, and these are showing you the average IV numbers uh, in this entire matrix that I have defined here. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and analyze this now. And what I do, always put things in the trade column, never put them in the existing position column. This uh, trades are moved from the trade columns to the existing position column by clicking on convert trades. I'll show you that in one second. But if this is something you were considering, you'd go ahead and put this on, you'd analyze it, and it's going to show you uh, our risk graph here. Okay. These lines each represent um, a date, uh, a profit loss line uh, for this whole entire position that we have on in the we put on in the options chain. Okay, over here you're going to see dates. Okay, it's showing today the third, and then I have 10.6, 10.9, and 10.12. 10.12, the solid line is representing expiration. Okay. You can have up to five different lines if you want to. Okay. The black dot is going to represent where you're at right now. Okay. If you have commissions on right now, so let's say I paid, you know, $10 or $15 of commissions to put this on, this black dot is actually going to be down here a little bit because it actually costs me money to put this on, and I'm not going to be starting at a zero level. I have to make up that commission before uh, I'm profitable. Okay. These lines right here, these vertical dashed lines are showing you the break even points. Okay. So basically, looking down at the bottom here, you're going to see on the x axis, this is the underlying price. This is the percentage of uh, yield you're going to get as time moves on into the uh, future here. This is uh, PL and dollar figures over here. Okay. Now, I'm on the T plus zero line right now. If I click on this next line, okay, it becomes highlighted. You're going to see that this little asterisk here moved from today to two days out to the fifth here. It was actually Saturday. So, now you're going to see these break-evens moved out wider. Okay, and uh, let's actually, you can actually right-click on this box. And let's actually put Monday's date in here because that's the date we'd actually be able to do something. So now you can see now we're looking at the 7th on this day. Okay. Showing the break-evens over here is out to 2% to the upside and 2% to the downside. Um, you know, if, ever, if it stays within this range here, 1028 to 1069, Got, it looks like you've got a pretty nice return on this uh, butterfly here. And to see exactly what that would be, at, you can left-click on this turquoise wand here on the base of this and hold it down with your mouse and left-clicking on it. And you can see the yield as you move up and down the x-axis to the penny if you want to and what's your Greeks and how they change. Okay. So let's say I like this trade and I want to actually put it on. What I would do then is I would hit this convert trade button and then it moves over from the trade column to the existing position column. I then click on my T log and you can see there it is, the price line butterfly I just put on there. Okay. So now what you could do is I could analyze this, and now let's say I wanted to uh, perhaps put a different trade on in Priceline. Okay, let's say I wanted to put, you know, a calendar on. Uh, let's say I want to put something on out here. Okay. So now it's showing me the existing position I have now, and then it's showing them both together if I do this. if I, That's because I have this B button selected here. 
Okay, if I click on this E, which means existing position, I want to look at the existing trade. It, it's now looking at the existing and then looking at the trade. If I click on the T button, it's looking at the trade by itself, which would be right here. And then it shows them both together. Okay, so now because I'm on this T, I can actually analyze just that trade by itself. Okay. If I click on the B, I can look at them both together if I wanted to. And then if I click on the E, I can again just look at the existing position I have on. Okay. Now you can actually go back. Option View saves up to five of these graphs. So you can go back. It's saving them. If you want to uh, superimpose some of them together, you can do that. Or you can delete them if you want to. So it's kind of nice because you're able to actually look at a couple different potential trades together and uh, superimpose them over each other and see what your risk, uh, what the, each trade's risk profile is going to work, uh, look like against each other. Okay, let's say I don't like this trade right here. I don't want to look at that one anymore. I can click on this pencil eraser here and I want to clear the trades. Those are now gone. Okay. If, for instance, you had um, a spread on over here, maybe. Okay, and a spread on over here. And you want to analyze these both separately and see what they're going to look like. Well, what I would do is I'm going to click on this October 16 highlighted. I'm going to analyze that. And you see why it said no existing position to analyze? That's because I'm on the E up here, and it's only looking at this one. I want to click on the T because I'm looking at trades. I'm going to analyze it. Okay. And you can zoom in or zoom out, okay, with these little buttons here. Okay, so I'm zoomed in there. I'm going to close that one. Now I want to look at this one, 23 days versus 16 days. I'm going to analyze that one. Okay, and now I want to superimpose the two over each other. I'm actually going to go down to two lines here. Let's go to three lines. I'm going to superimpose them over each other, and you can see they're going to be really close. Okay, the blue is looking at the October, and the uh, the green line is looking at the, the weekly. Okay, maybe you want to zoom, zoom out even more. I'm basically just dragging the uh, x-axis down here to zoom out. So it looks like the weekly is going to give you a, you know, a little bit higher of a, uh, of a return here, but the uh, October is going to give you a little bit more, tiny bit of downside, uh, upside protection on this one. Okay, and that's simply by clicking the top here how I'm able to isolate anything that's in this particular contract. Okay. So there's also a number of ways you can have a number of different strategies in the same underline and different contracts or even in the same uh, expiration contract, and you're able to isolate those and analyze them separately um, or together if you want to. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and clear my trades. And uh, here is the uh, position I have in... Uh, that I have in the existing position here. So if I click on my T-log, you can see this trade here. If you didn't like this trade, you could simply come in here and delete these dates right here, and it'll be like this trade never never happened. I actually like this one, so I want to watch it for later. Okay. So that's kind of how you, you start out um, in the uh, quotes display here. Enter your symbol. Okay, you would, and here's Tesla. Jump into Tesla, double click, left click twice on it, pull up an options chain. Okay, and then you could uh, only enter trades in these uh, in this position here. Okay, so for instance, say you're You know, your bearish Tesla, because the Tesla car caught on fire, at, uh, what was it, yesterday? You know, you could put this on, and, you know, as long as, here's your break even. You can click on your timelines. And you can see here, you know, this is going to be by the 15th. 
that if Tesla stays at this position, or at least stays, um, you know, doesn't increase by 7%, 7% is your break even within, uh, not even within, uh, what is it, there are 12 days from now. now. This is your profit line, and you can see what your profit is going to be. 12% right here, it looks like you're going to max out at like 13 or 14%. Now, if you wanted to put this position on, let's go ahead and convert the trade. Now it's in um, this existing posi position field. So if you actually put this trade on and toss or whatever, you could come in here. You would then go in the T-log, and you could, you know, uh, adjust the price accordingly. We do have imports, but it's, you know, unless you have a ton of transactions, it's easier just to do this. Let's say you got filled at 301 on this one, or I got filled at, you know, 1, uh, 112 on this one. Okay, and you paid, you know, three dollars for this and three dollars for this. I'm just throwing numbers in there. So this is your commission, so you can keep track. You can come back and, and put an option view what you actually got filled at and what your actual commissions were. So then you can come over here and you can see them be down a little bit now because of the commissions I entered in there. And then you'd be able to track this going forward and watch it. If you wanted to watch it live, what you could do is you could restore this options chain down up here. You can see I shrunk it down a little bit here. Okay. This arrow, you notice I shrunk it down. It's showing me that, hey, your positions aren't showing up here. This arrow is going to show me where they're at, which is kind of nice. If you have a huge options chain, you open it up and you have positions somewhere, you'll see an arrow. Click on that arrow and it'll bring you to your position. Okay, so it brought me to the position here. Now I want to analyze it. You can open this graph up side by side, and you can watch it uh, throughout the day as it moves. Okay, now let's say you wanted to make an adjustment here. Let's say, you know, I want to bring in a little bit more premium because I don't think it's going to get, I think it's going to stay in this certain range, and I want to, want to pull in some more. Well, you can come down here. And let's do something like this. Watch the graph. Pretty cool, huh? So you're able to go ahead and side by side make adjustments, make changes. The graph's going to change for you. You can see that right now what's happening is you'll see in blue is the existing position I have on. This is a proposed trade. It's showing me in this graph this purple line here, it's showing me uh, what my new risk reward graph is going to look like with this trade on combined with my existing position. Okay. Now let's say I want to clear the trades. I don't want to do that. Boom, it's gone. And this black dot will move around throughout the day if you have your, you know, real time. If you have delayed data, um, you can update every half an hour um, with Backtrader. If you're in Backtrader, you can step through time and watch this graph change as you're backtesting. You know, if you were backtesting, saying, and you were getting close to uh, a break even, or you were getting to a 10% or a 5% loss, which would be maybe a rule for one of your strategies, you could then say, okay, it's time to make an adjustment. You would probably you would go over here. If you were going to take down a trade or something like that, you would put the opposite trade in right here. Okay, basically you're putting like you're going to buy this one back and you're going to um, close this one out by putting the opposite trade in here. And watch when I do this, nothing's left because you've taken this trade off uh, as far as uh, option view concerns or is concerned here. So now I would hit convert trade. You're going to want the position, existing position disappear. Click on my T-log and now I've got my Tesla opening and my Tesla closing. Okay, so that's how you're going to enter trades, track trades, um, analyze existing uh, positions uh, against uh, proposed adjustments or adding a leg on to something. Uh, that's how you would do it. But again, how I did that was I had your, my matrix was maximized here. Then I put something on. You have to have a trade in here in order for this to, to, to go into effect. A debit there. And then we're going to do restore down sometimes it's next to help <coughs> excuse me sometimes it's next to next to help over here but I'm going to restore this down find my trade 
click on this little graph button here next to the printer, which uh, says Open Analysis in Automatic Update Mode. I call it Side-by-Side -side Analysis Mode, and we put it on here. And now he's showing my debit spread. Okay, I'm going to see. I think I have a question here. Uh, I got somebody asking me about looking at uh, break evens by standard deviations out. Mm, I'm not sure about that. Let me look at something again. Uh, uh, trade here. So you want to look at them, your break evens. I think so. Let me put a different trade on here. That's going to look a little bit different. Okay, I'm just putting a calendar on here, a one, uh, one lot calendar here. I'm going to analyze this one. And then basically, what we're doing here is you can see the standard deviations are at the bottom. I'm not sure this is going to exactly answer your question, Tony, but this is you can see your standard deviations here. Okay. And these don't have any break evens because they're underwater right there because this is such a small trade. Um, let me actually increase the lot sizes here. And still, this isn't good. Well, we've got a. Uh, the volatility uh, is what's causing this. But let's say I clicked on here. So these are my break-evens, uh, and it's showing me time frames uh, where my break-evens are uh, uh, as far as the time goes. Um, these are showing me my standard deviations out here. You can change the dates to see what your break-evens would be at any particular time. Okay. And you do that by clicking on the lines themselves. Um, or you can also, you know, change volatility as well if you wanted to. Okay, this volte change box over here allows you to say, okay, let's say you increase, uh, expect a volatility increase of three percent. Watch the lines in the graph; they're going to shift. Okay, so now it shifted up a little bit, so now I have break evens here. Okay, uh, calendars like volatility. Let me put in just seven here, and you can see the lines all shift up here. So you can adjust for volatility in this as well. Um, you know, as far as seeing where your break-evens are, this is another way you can do it as well. I'm going to click on the price chart here. Now we're looking at the price chart for Tesla, one little car fire. And we'll go ahead and hit this button right here, which is going to show me my profit zone. Okay. So based on this calendar, this calendar, because it's so underwater at the beginning of this, it has to... Uh, uh, end up out here for your profit zone. Let me put a different trade on to give you a better example of that. Um, let's just do. Well, I kind of want to do a. Let's just do a butterfly. Here's my butterfly on this one, and now we're going to go ahead and click on the price chart again, and now. I'm going to look at this little button right here. It will show me my your profit zone. Your break-even lines are these blue lines at these particular dates and time. Okay. Uh, I got someone want me. Let's go ahead and uh, so this is kind of another feature that you can use to show where your break-evens are are going to be. Um, at different points in time there. Um, someone, let me see, I got another uh, question here. Okay, someone's saying they want to see some the graphic analysis side by side um, as we back test. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and I'm going to go into back trader mode. This is how you back test. Say you started your new account for back testing. I'm going to go right here, click on back trader. Always want to have this window open when you're back testing. Okay, let's just go back. Uh, let's go back to August. Okay, 
The S moves you by half an hour. The D moves you by day. I'm going to hit start here. So we're looking at August 15th, Thursday. Uh, that trade's going to disappear. Oh, no, it should, no it's going to disappear because, uh, of course, we're going back in time here. So we're looking at Tesla now. Looks like these are the, it's only trading five point strikes. So I'm going to go ahead and click define. And cleans up big time for me there. Okay, so let's go ahead and put a, uh, let's put a butterfly on here. Actually, yeah, that's fine. We'll do that. Just put a one standard deviation uh, butterfly on. Analyze it. Looks good to me. We're going to convert the trade. Now we're in the existing position. Okay, it's in the existing position there. I'm going to restore this down. I'm going to click on my side-by-side -side analysis mode. And now I have my back trader window open. I have to keep this open here. And I'm going to go to Friday at the close. Okay, it's going to update for me. Okay, you can see my black dot move. You can see I'm up $70 down here now. I'm going to go to Monday. Updating over here. Now we're on Monday. Okay, price is getting away from us here. I'm up $50 now. This is probably getting close to a break even. Maybe you take some profit, maybe not. I'm going to move to Tuesday. And I can always uh, also um, see where we're at. Yep, see, price got away from us, Tesla. Well, we knew Tesla's going to just, has been skyrocketing. So uh, now you're in a loss on this. But now let's say you wanted to, you know, let's go back a day here. And um, what I'm going to do is zoom into this graph. So you can see, this. I'm just back testing in back trader mode here, but you'd be able to have this graph. Um, see, now I'm zoomed in. So now you'd be able to get a, a better idea Let's go back one more day here, just so you can see that it, it you can do this side by side analysis here. Um, at the Friday, and uh, be able to see where you're going to be throughout your back test with your trade. So, I mean, of course, you're going to make some uh, definitely going to make some moves um, as according to whatever kind of rules you have set up for yourself. It's important to have the rules set up for yourself. But let's say, okay, I'm happy with. Um, let me highlight. You can hover over this black dot. It's going to show you what percentage you're at. So it says I'm, I got a 7% yield right here. You know, probably not uh, a target you'd want to take unless you were real bullish and say this thing is going to take off. Uh, maybe you'd want to take this profit. You know, what you could do. And let me show you also. I can click on the status button up here. It's going to show you the uh, $50,000 account here. Uh, it's going to show you your gain loss. That's what status does. Uh, shows you your total account. Uh, and if you had multiple positions on it, it would list them all here. And calculate the, um, you know, your uh, uh, gain loss. Um, but what you would do is you, then you could then come here and you could then put in the opposite trade. And I was going to click on status because I was going to show you something also. Let me go ahead. I want to show you the whole trade. This is kind of neat, too. So you have this whole trade on here. You want to click on status and say, I'm going to right-click on it. I right-clicked on it. You can set up alerts for this trade. Okay, let's say I want to look for a uh, percentage gain. I want to say, show me when there's going to be a 10%. You can set up another one, too, if you want to. But show me when I got a 10% gain on this chart here. Okay, and I have my alert set up. Okay, and... Uh, let's go ahead and step a half an hour into the future here. Well, actually not a half an hour. We're going to open up on Monday. And you see there's my 10% objective that I have set up for it, which is 95%. Okay. I'm obviously heading in the wrong direction here. But just to sh I just kind of wanted to show you real quick that you can set up all sorts of stops and objectives um, in this as well. But let's just say I want to get out of this trade. So I want to send the closing trade to the matrix. Boom, it puts the opposite trade in for me. I then hit convert trades and I'm out. Yes, I want to cancel that. Okay, so I hope that answers your question, Jim, that you can actually do that. Yeah, it only stays open when you're doing the side-by-side -side analysis. That's right. That's kind of a nice way to back test. That's how I would, instead of going back and forth between uh, a really large matrix 
you know, and then analyzing and then going back and seeing where you're at. Uh, for back testing the side by side is is awesome. When you're done with back trader mode, I can click here. Yes, I'm okay with going out of back trader mode. I can close my status here. Yes, that's fine. And we're back to the beginning here. It's amazing how fast time goes uh, when I'm just walking through and demonstrating uh, doing some things with option views. So, you know, I kind of went a, uh, kind of quick there. Maybe not so quick, but just uh, a lot of features. It's very robust, and there's a lot of things you can do with it. Um, you know, uh, what I like to do and offer uh, anybody that's doing a trial is to do a personal walkthrough. Basically, it would look the same as this, but we'd be talking on the phone together where we're doing some desktop sharing and looking at some trades maybe that you uh, are doing, and we can analyze them together. Um, one other thing, some other important things that I wanted to share real quick is uh, this default. Uh, this view button at the top is really how you get started and set up the defaults. The default model button uh, is important just at the beginning because uh, it's important to know that uh, option view is uh, defaulted to hit bid ask slippage, which means uh, when you're looking at the graphs, uh, option view is going to look at the, the bid and the ask and it's going to give you the worst possible fill. So you're going to be buying at the ask. Uh, selling at the bid and that's going to give you some uh, trades that might have looked good when you're looking at the average between the bid and the ass. So I usually recommend you know something to moderate. Moderate or small because you're going to work the orders if you're putting out a trade. Okay. If you want commissions included in your uh, in your modeling also this is where you would select it. But uh, just a view at the top default models these two things are important for you to know here. Okay. Some other resources I wanted to share with you uh, really quick uh, is you can click, uh, go to optionview.com. Click on this support tab right underneath our phone number. We have brand new OptionView 7 tutorial videos done by Steve Luntz. Uh, so they're all really up to date with the new features and everything like that. Okay. Uh, these essentials recordings, uh, you can go right here. Um, me, Ken, and Karen uh, do these often. You can go here and watch, um, you know, our past uh, our past uh, essentials videos. I know there's some about back testing in particular. There's some about scanning. Uh, the last one I did was about uh, option view scanning tool, which I didn't even uh, briefly touch on today. Uh, I can spend a whole hour just on that. Um, so go, you can go here and look at those, and the titles are pretty good about um, the descriptions of what we're going to be talking about in these uh, uh, in these recordings here. If you're more of a reader and want to read a user guide, you're going to see these user guides here. A lot of them are going to be uh, referencing Option View 6. Uh, all those same principles apply. We're in the process of updating those uh, to all the new features in uh, Option View 7. Okay. Uh, another thing I wanted to show you real quick too that uh, uh, this is. Go to discoveroptions.com. There's tons of free information here uh, as well, but I just wanted to log in here and show people what you'd have access to as a mentoring student. Um, this is what your courses would look like. You'd watch a course, uh, do the homework, and then you would meet with your mentor one-on-one. -on -one. We have a stock analysis report, with, which is uh, just for uh, mentoring students. i got to log in here again real quick. Um, stock analysis report is just for mentoring students. You're able to put a symbol in here, and it's going to show you some really, really nice information about uh, the implied volatility and where um, the underlying has gapped before. This is if you know earnings came out before the market open. If it came out after the market open, shows you the SKUs. Um, Earnings is coming out in Apple right now, that's why. But you'd see, you know, here was obviously some earnings coming out right around this time. And it would show you the SKUs, and it would show you how to possibly set up the legs of uh, a possible spread you were going to do to take advantage of the uh, volatility crush uh, after uh, uh, earnings came out. Besides this, if you sign up for a course three or higher, this is one of the biggest thing that uh, things that are, are – unknown to uh, people out there that are even considering our mentoring. These are inside wires which are only uh, accessible to people that have taken course three or above. Uh, a lot of different strategies that are not even talked about in uh, the, the courses, uh, course lessons themselves. Okay, I mean the Jay's Lizard strategy. Really? What's that? I didn't see that one yet. 
But you can look down here, you can see there's customizable op scan or scanning uh, uh, formulas there. There's condors based on stochastics. Um, just tons and tons and tons of, there's probably about 300 of these uh, on here over the years of just really in-depth uh, strategies, technical analysis, capital allocation. Uh, there's some videos in here about that. Um, you know, earnings calendars. So just want to let you know that there's a lot of these, and these are all, you know, either between 30 minutes to an hour and 15 minute long videos here. Okay, but I just wanted to share that with you guys. Go back to option view. Anybody have any questions, I'd be happy to answer or take a look at anything. Okay, all of these are uh, actually recorded, um, and you can uh, go to uh, optionview.com. Let me go back there real quick and show you where you can see these. Uh, we're going to the home page here, and you can always watch and see what's coming up here in this uh, pink section here, and you can see the full calendar of upcoming events, or you can view the archived recordings. If you register for any one of these uh, and are unable to attend, you'll always be emailed a link to the recording, um, you know, usually the next day. Again, I encourage you guys to call us up if you have any questions, want to do a personalized walkthrough. Uh, thanks for attending, and we'll uh, see you all soon.